The second uh, diagram uh, is Stoker flow or system dynamics, and this diagram can be run as simulation and has a lot of merit due to that fact. So, in a nutshell, system dynamics is taking causal diagram and actually break them into lower level details that define flow within a system. So you will see the same element that you see in the causal diagram exist in the stock and flow diagram. The difference is that we define the flow. So every element that can contain something is called a stock and it's like a sink. And every element that uh, move data uh, from one element to another, from one stick to another called um, a flow and you can see it here. What we are doing is here we are collecting data, a lot of data. So data from interviews and a lot of data from any operational system. And this data gives us an understanding what is the default behavior of a system and then we are going to capture this default behavior. So for example here we are trying to depict purchasing a process so we know from systems what is the default or the average number of contract that IT is dealing with a month. So you can see a 10. Then we know from system logs that um, what are the average number of the contracts um, that IT working with vendors or per vendor a month. And that between 1 to 10. So we are randomly generate a number between 1 to 10 to depict reality. Uh, data here, data here, and the flow usually will have the logic. So in this scenario, pretty simple, we are multiplying the vendors by the contract. So randomly we get a number uh, in between, uh, I'm not good in math, but in between the minimum number and the maximum number those two uh, can um, provide. And that will be the number of contract that IT will get each and every month. Um, and here you see a simple scenario where the data from IT just move into purchasing. You can create the delays, uh, you can create queues. So here, for example, we create a queue uh, and the logic of this queue is pretty simple. It's saying that uh, if there are more than 50 contracts to process, uh, just process the 50 and the rest leave in the queue which means leave it in this stock, which means that the stock will grow over time if we have more than 50 coming in. Um, variables hold data um, that we can gather over time. So in this particular scenario, every contract that uh, gets to purchasing for process, we are capturing. And here, once uh, legal and HR review the contract and purchasing finished negotiation, then we have ready to use contract um, and we capture it together. And then we can do a simple manipulation that says, okay, our efficiency is going actually to be a deviation of um, records uh, for, for contracts and uh, ready contracts. You can see it here, pretty simple logic. Uh, once everything, and this is a pretty simple example just to understand the logic, uh, the basic of it. Uh, once everything is set, what you can do is run simulation. Uh, and that will depict uh, the reality that uh, we started uh, to encourage when we were invited to do engagement or uh, whatever the system is right now. In this particular scenario, uh, the efficiency was going to go down to 20%. That's what we saw. Um, simulation has a lot of merit because it helps you to validate your model. So if uh, we saw 20 and the model will end up with 5 or with 60, it means there's something wrong here and we need to go and uh, revisit the model. Uh, once you have the model in place, you can start to see in more details issue in the model especially if you start to capture data of each one of the elements, you see where stuff stuck comparing to others. You can see clogs, um, you can see delays and how they are impacting the system. Everything that we saw on the causal diagram should be seen here in much more clear and detailed way. Um, and obviously, you, we can use the, this diagram also to run certain scenarios and see how they are going to look 
in the future. So let's say that uh, the factor define a solution and we can uh, factor the solution in 10%, 20% or 30% and then we are going to rerun it. So um, if this is um, the 0%, which is the reality that we saw when we started. Now I can go and say, okay, uh, I can do it nicer, just a second. And that way, okay, so now I'm going to run it on 20%. Resources <laughs> stuck. So I can run it now on 10% and then I can run it on Hopefully, twenty percent. And the idea just to show you how a uh, different percentage depict uh, different values, different future values. And the bottom line here is that uh, you can use uh, also simulation to show how different scenarios will look in the future. So in this particular case we see how different risk that we are willing to take of number of contracts that are uh, going to pass the regular process, which uh, solution or how, how they are going to support the efficiency of uh, purchasing. And here you can see we are about 80. Um, this um, is lower. This is the 20%, around uh, 40 end up. Um, and the last one probably is going to be the default one that we saw, so it will be the 20 falling down. And that's all a uh, pretty simple uh, model. Uh, the ability to run the simulation is uh, ex extremely helpful to see problem and to show executive or people uh, how the problem looks like. Um, based on the causal diagram, but uh, much more in detail and enabled to get much more in detail view and conclusion as well.